Oh my god. Um, yeah, sorry it took this long. Um, <clears throat> yo, what is going on guys, it's Sage here, and welcome to my feedback video for the Genshin Impact closed beta. Before the video starts, I just want to say that this is my very first ever attempt on this kind of video, hence it, why it took this long, and so if there's something I missed and or made a mistake, I apologize in advance. But without further ado, here's my take on Genshin Impact. Mihoyo. For the people who are familiar with this name, may have heard if not played the popular mobile game Honkai Impact 3rd. Known for its over-the-top graphics for mobile game and compelling story with beautifully animated CGs and animations. Last year they announced the long-awaited open-world map, a post-Honkai Odyssey. Which if you guys are interested, I made a full playthrough of it on my second channel, links in the description. It was Mihoyo's first attempt on making an actual open world map with its own characters and leveling system outside of the main game. Although it had its ups and downs, including many, many glitches and unstable asset loads, it was a very solid addition to the game. When Mihoyo announced their new project being an open world co-op game, Genshin Impact, a lot of people were talking about how it was very similar with Breath of the Wild. Many Breath of the Wild fans were upset when Sony unveiled Genshin was going to be on the PS4 in 2019's China Joy. Some guy even destroyed his PS4 in protest at the event. Now, I may sound very biased here, but I don't see how comparing the two is fair, let alone a good comparison. From the game engine and even the raw gameplay. Yeah, sure, graphics do look similar, some assets like the chests do look... similar. But the engine and how the game itself is supposed to be played is different. With that said, many still believe that Genshin Impact is just a carbon copy of Breath of the Wild, and Sony shouldn't have promoted it, even though... well... But this video isn't really a comparison of the two, and it's more of my own take after playing the final close beta of Genshin Impact. But I'll probably end up comparing it with Honkai though. So, let's get started, shall we? Step into a huge open world of adventure and mystery, where heroic quests await. As a traveler from another world, you must find your lost sibling and unravel Teyvat's many secrets. Joined by Paimon, a kind-hearted sprite guide, your mission takes you through beautiful forests, bustling towns, and treacherous dungeons. And while your journey may put you into the path of merciless foes and fiendish puzzles, you can count on numerous playable allies to join your custom party of four, harnessing the power of the elements to overcome all obstacles. And while I completely read that from the game's description, the game itself is far more than just that. The game starts off with you, the traveler, with your twin battling god Kiana, I mean by some unknown god, as Paimon would say. And because you're still level 1, but for some reason has wings, you then lose to her, get your power sealed away, and lost your twin. A few years passed and you found Paimon almost drowning and you basically saved her. And that was two months ago of in-game time, so I don't know what her character did in those two months, but it was probably very unproductive, which I guess if they were productive, they wouldn't have met Paimon and this game wouldn't be a thing. But I digress. You set out with Paimon to find your lost twin in Teyvat. So far in the final closed beta, there were only two regions of Teyvat that the beta testers was able to play in. First one being Mondstadt, the city of wind, and Liyue, the mountains of earth, but we're gonna talk about that later. Anyway, in the first minute of the game, Paimon tells you about the Statue of the Seven, one of which is the Animo statue, the god of the wind. You then touch the statue and lo and behold, you got your first element in the game as your power. After Paimon's small speech about how you're not from this world and that's why you got your power and also how she's jealous that she wasn't the chosen one, you meet Amber, your first ally in the game. With Amber's help, you continue to go to the city of Mondstadt and meet the leader of the Knights of Favonius, Jean, and her assistant Lisa. And together, with the help of the Knights of Favonius, you start your journey to find your lost twin! Phew, okay. Now, I mentioned the two regions, Mondstadt and Liyue in the beginning, right? In the final closed beta, those were the only ones we can access. Even though we couldn't fully explore it, it was enough to know what this game is like and how it plays. So let's start with the map and the world of the game. Let's first see the maps of the open worlds in Honkai. This one is the Sakura Samsara map, and it's the first ever map they released in the open world game mode. 
It was mostly designed to only work as a separate game mode with a different story and also for the weekly tasks. It has two playable areas, the village area and the celestial castle, which sadly after doing the main story, its only purpose is for the weekly tasks and nothing else. Now this is the second one, which is the Shiksal HQ. A bit bigger, a few new features like the May food stand where you can recover SP for your Valkyries, and has some intractables including a lift, Mexican pilot, and if you're lazy you can fly the ship. It doesn't really have other purposes outside of transporting you from point A to point B after a certain quest that involves the ship, but hey, you don't need to walk. It has three playable areas, the terminal, the factory, and the port hub. Gotta say it like that, cause reasons. The third and final one being a post Honkai Odyssey, which has the most features including destructible objects, a different level up system from the main game, a skill tree, and so on and so forth. Now if you guys have played this map or just watched somebody else play it, you may have seen some uh, questionable things. I'm pretty sure that this was because it was their first attempt on making these types of gameplay into Honkai, and I bet they noticed that and took everything from it to make Genshin Impact. Now compare those three maps with this map. I'm honestly very pleased to see how big this map is. In the beta, you can only explore the map that's inside the red line, and whenever you try to explore outside of it, well... Is that? Did that? That? Really? It didn't count. Bro, oh my fucking god! Now this feature is honestly a no-brainer if you don't have it in the game, and that is you can pin certain things on the map with custom pins, meaning you can, well, name the pins with names. In the beta, there are 7 pins to choose from. I don't know if they'll add more, but maybe not, because you can rename the pins as you like. What I did in the beta was I tried to just make a mental note of what pin means what since the PS4 version wouldn't let you rename them. What I personally used was the meat as food sources or cooking spots, exclamation marks as chest spots, hidden spots, enemy camps, and the hill trailhead as bosses. Another simple feature on the map is you can hide everything else except the domains or dungeons, and only show the name of the surrounding areas. You can also see how many resins you have left, which is pretty handy since resins are one of those things you have to look out for before doing lee lines and domains. More on those later. Now, I don't know if this is only the PS4 version, but because they decided that they would go with a similar cursor from Destiny, it sometimes bugs out and you can't select the icons on the map because the cursor itself is outside of the screen, yet your screen is still centered, making you think you can select them. One of the more important icons on the map that you want to memorize is the teleport waypoints, or TP waypoints. In a world this big, not having TPs open is one of the worst things to have early in the game, so I suggest right after you unlock Geo by going to the Geo statue and resonating with it, try to open as much statues as possible early because that'll help with not just with exploration, but opening or activating statues give you adventure rank XP as well. Now with this strat comes with a fair few things that you need to keep in mind. First things first, the areas that you're trying to open early has enemies that are way higher level than you, so of course you want to avoid every single encounter as much as possible. This ties in with how aggro works in this game, but I'll get to that later in the video. The reason why I said you want Geo first before exploring and opening statues early is because Geo's skill helps you climb the mountains in Liyue so you don't have to waste some stamina because stamina is very important in this game. One thing to keep in mind when TPing is if you don't have a powerful device, it might take up to around 45 seconds to TP from one point to another. For comparison, I played the final beta on my PS4 Slim with only an HDD and not an SSD, and it took around 20 to 35 seconds at the end of the playthrough. I don't know if they did something in the few updates they rolled out throughout the beta, but in the beginning, it did take around 34 seconds to TP. Or you can just walk, that's fine too. Let's start with how I would personally start in any game that's new. First off, go straight to the settings. Now, I can't show you the full settings here, but I can link a video to where you can see the settings for yourself in the description. Anyway, in the final beta you can only go up to 60 FPS, which is pretty weird since they optimized Honkai to be able to run at 120 FPS on PC. So maybe and hopefully they will have that as an option later in the full release. You can also switch the controller if you don't like playing these types of games with keyboard and mouse. The rest are pretty standard, but one thing I did in the middle of my playthrough was changing how the minimap works. I changed it to rotating from fixed. 
It worked real well for me, because personally it made it easier to face the waypoint. Also, you can change the UI language to a number of available languages, and you have four voiceovers to choose from. English, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. I would personally go with Japanese because it's really good, and I understand most of it, but English is actually really good as well. After that, I usually look at the general menu, that's the start button on PS4 and escape on PC, to get to know what I can access from it other than the settings. As you guys see on screen, on the left side we have the mail, a clock that I will go into deeper later, and the settings. Keep in mind, all of this are all in beta, so it's subject to change, meaning they might or may not add another icon or option on this screen later in the full release. On top we see our profile, which you can see your UID to add other people, your adventure rank level, world level, and also your in-game name. For PS4 users, people will see two names, first being your in-game Genshin name, and also your PSN ID. Best part about the name is that it's the exact same with Honkai Impact, where you can pretty much rename as many times as you like. The rest of the options below are pretty straightforward, and the only thing you can't directly access from the shortcut wheel, at least on PS4, is the shop and the party setup menus. With those out of the way, next up is familiarizing myself with the UI of the game. First, let's see the icons on the top right of your screen. I'm going to show you guys a screenshot with the controls on screen so you know which one is which. On PC, you can change the keybinds as you like, but in the beta you couldn't, but I'm sure they'll be fixed in the full release. Next up is the top left corner of your screen, which shows you the minimap and other icons. Again, I'll show you guys a screenshot on screen of it so you guys will know which one is which with each of their controls. If you have anything new in, say, your inventory, a red dot will show on top of the icon. A little tip, if a red dot is showing on the character's icon, and you have opened the character screen but it still doesn't go away, go into the character screen and click on the character selection on the bottom left of your screen, and it'll show which character has something new. This has been part 1 of my take on Genshin Impact. The next part will consist of the juicy parts including gameplay, characters, and equipments. If you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure you leave a like, that definitely helps me a lot, and also subscribe with notifications on so you won't miss my next upload, and yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, it's been Sage, and I will see you guys later.